happened, mate. Oh, it's been a little while. It's been, it's been a little while, mate. So, yeah, we've um, apologies, guys, for being a little bit absent lately. We've just uh, got life commitments, you know. <laughs> we don't get paid for this. <laughs> yeah, mate. In between your rights and earthquakes and Sydney's bullshit, um, <laughs> pretty much. It's just a yeah. It's just a war zone down here. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what's been happening, mate? Just been working hard. Yeah, yeah, basically business is fucking thriving. So I'm working a lot. Good, man. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Um, all right. So we want to cover a few topics today. We want to smash through these. Um, there was a lot happening and a lot that has happened. So we're not going to delve into too much that we've missed over the last few weeks. Yeah, um, that's right. But we do want to we do want to put forward some thoughts um, post Devon versus Thor fight. Um, look, we can all. I feel like a lot of us are on the same page. We didn't think Devin was going to win. Yeah. I mean, a guy who's come in with five weeks training or preparation for a fight against someone larger than him in frame with 18 months worth of training. Exactly. I mean, you do the math. So Devin saw it as a good opportunity, as something on his bucket list. He's came, he's had fun, he's ticked it off, uh, probably got a decent paycheck from it. Oh, yeah. And it's opened up new doors, no doubt, and it will in the future. So props to Devin for stepping up. Um, he's just that guy that will never turn down anything, really. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's what he's said in the past, too. Yeah. It's so awesome. good yeah. on him, anyway. Like, big cheers to Devin <clears throat> for taking that on. Yeah, yeah. So with that in mind, what should Devin be doing now? He's said that he wants to remain in the fighting game to some level, whether it's fighting or just training or remaining active, whatever. Okay, so he's because he's, he's considering it as a hobby, is yep. what you're saying. Okay. Yep. So, um, I mean, as an arm wrestler, we're arm wrestlers. We want to see him back in arm wrestling full time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> obviously, before this match, we saw him in a dominant performance against Michael Todd. Um, and since then, you know, we've kind of heard a lot of rumors. Is Devon next for Levan? Who do we want to see Devon against next? Um, because really that match showed who was number one in North America. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, based on recent credentials, Devon is the man to beat in North America. So by default, a, a match against one of the best Eastern Europeans makes sense to me. But a lot of people. And, in, and it's incredibly marketable as well. Of course. So there's a lot of opportunity <clears throat> from that match. Yeah, and um, we have seen uh, the first stage of top eight, Levan, dominant, dominant, dominant against Dave Chafee. Yeah. Um, shut off all avenues. Is that a match that needs to happen next? Or is it something that could be in the works in the future? What do you think? It'd definitely be in the works for the future. I mean, mm -hmm. I think Levan still has commitments to completing top eight and winning that. Yep. Um, yep. With Devin, he needs to get back in. There is proper arm wrestling form yeah i mean he needs to put it on a few kegs <laughs> after what he's lost yeah i mean yeah do you recall what weight he was walking into michael todd's match 270 to 290 do you reckon uh, i think he was 146 kilos 146 kilos yeah. oh really so he was well over 315 pounds maybe <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't, don't quote me on that this is just yeah. rough memory I imagine he was around the 300 pound mark, give or take. Yeah. The biggest we've seen, Devin. Uh, he, I know for a fact he was heavier than Michael Todd, I yeah. believe. And he kept his weight a secret. He did. Know. He did. Um, <laughs> look, I would, I would love to see Devin versus Levan next, as would a lot of people. Um, there's rumors that he'll need a good six months to a year to train for it um, yeah. to get his pancake caloric intake in. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm excited regardless. I think Devin is one of the last people on earth besides um, Vitaly that could really do something. And of course, someone else that we'll talk about soon, just based on some um, news that's come up. Yeah. Um, what about Michael Todd? Do you still think he has a chance? Stylic stylistically, yes. Based on his performance against Devin, no. Okay. Do you reckon oh. Devin and Michael Todd were a bad matchup? in terms of styles? And do you think Levan and Michael Todd is a good matchup in terms of Michael yeah. possibly so, breaking through Levan's wrist? So prior to 
Michael Todd and Devon's match that they had a few months back. I thought Michael Todd would be a better match stylistically for Levan. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did think that Levan, sorry, Michael would do better against Devon than he did, but Devon clearly showed he was dominant that day. Yeah. Post that match, I really do think that Devon is the man for Levan stylistically. But I, at the end of the day, you really can't rule out Michael Todd. We do know in the last few weeks, he's come out with some news pretty much saying that he's going to experiment with his body and put on a lot of weight. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe follow the Levan diet. We don't know. He's yeah. <laughs> putting forth some ideas which, you know, would indicate that he's going pretty hard or he's going to go pretty hard in the next six months. Yeah. Um, so and You know what? Good on him for saying that. And that, mm -hmm. that's what's probably required to yeah. of him. And, and that's, not, not normal. <laughs> no, no. But that's what I love is, is the fact that Michael's been transparent here and he's yeah. going to show us his journey along the way. And look, we may very well see a Michael Todd that we've never seen before um, that could have just destroyed the Devon, which we recently saw yeah. beat Michael. So look, anything can happen in six to 12 months. Um, on any given day, it doesn't matter who the favourite is. Things can change in a short yeah. amount of time. So, yeah. That's the beauty of arm wrestling, man. Yeah. You know what? And losses fuel progression. So, yeah. yep. I think it's awesome. For sure. So, quickly moving on to more so to Levan. Uh, we know he's got some uh, professional development happening in his career outside of arm wrestling. There's some rumours that he's going to be in a film. He's yeah. He's going to be doing a few things here and there in the in the spotlight. So I'm really excited to see that. I did say he posted a photo on his Instagram story at what looked like a Got Talent studio with like the buzzers and everything in the background. Oh, for real. So I think he, he was there with uh, the Georgian Strongman. Is it Constantine? Constantino? Not sure. Yeah. Not sure. I I'll have to double check his name. It's He's the number one Strongman in Georgia. Okay. Um, so yeah, he was there with him. Um, in a studio which looked like something out of Got Talent. <laughs> so I'm interested to That's see what's going on there and what will come of that. Yeah, we'll have to keep up to date with that. Um, but specifically um, into arm wrestling, there's a few people I want to see Levan um, face and it's um, either Devon or Michael Todd, whoever's best fitted given yeah. the time frame. Uh, whether it's uh, Devon or Michael in six to 12 months who have taken on this new pancake diet or whatever. Um, we're probably going to see a Vitaly versus Levan rematch based on the structure of top eight and the likelihood of them facing again. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think there's going to be much, much uh, opposition for Vitaly except for Levan. Yep. And same for Levan. Yep, for sure. Um, so, you know, given that, I really do think Levan is the athlete most likely to beat or contend against Levan, because as much as Levan has continued to progress um, in the last two to three years, in the absence of um, top eight due to COVID, yeah. we have seen Levan also put on a substantial amount of weight and strength. So yeah, <clears throat> with that in mind, I, I would love to see um, Vitaly against Levan next. And then maybe after that, depending on how that goes, uh, a Levan versus Devon or a Marco Todd. But there's one other figure um, and I don't know how, what, what this means based on the video, but essentially there was a, a competition in Europe, I believe in Russia held yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Igor Mazarenko was there and so was Denis Saplenkov. Since then, PAL and Armbets has released some stories and posts on their Instagram about an interview they did with Denis and whether or not what his plans were in the next 12 months to compete. Based on what PAL has said in the statement released, in the next 12 months, Dennis will be ready for war and potentially against Levan. Now, because I'm yet to see this interview with, um, with English subtitles, I can't tell you much more than that. Yeah. I don't know if it's clickbait from Armbets TV or whether or not Dennis truly wants to continue in this sport at a high level. Regardless of what he should do based on his health, it still is apparently something we need to talk about. So, assuming Dennis's health holds up, 
in the next 12 months and he dedicates himself back to that high level, mm-hmm. do you think he should and can beat Lamar? No. Do you th- no. No. Um, is it a case of he's past his prime or Levan is just too good? Even in I think Dennis might need some more more time than 12 months. Yep. Um, judging by his health. He's yep. got to take it real easy, real slow, and and be cautious on how much you know yep. it is he has to use to yep. revert to his original form. Of course. And so that's if he even can revert to his original form. Yeah. This is all speculation at the moment. For sure. So we have seen in Dennis's absence over the last three years, Levan has continued to grow and get stronger and grow and grow. Yeah. Three years is a lot of time out, especially with health related issues. Um, and I think Levan has clearly capitalized on that. Yeah. If we were to see a Dennis that never got sick, who was continuing to train and get stronger, I really think Dennis would still be the favorite to win right now. Um, and we would have already seen the match between the two of them. However, in that three years of absence, Dennis has only, you know, he's really put the brakes on. He's slowed down. He's you know focused what? on I himself. Think, I think it'd be mentally frustrating as well for Dennis if he does lose to Levan. The reason why is because it wasn't his choice to step out of arm wrestling, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So it, it also might be anxiety in a sense where he might not even bother. Mm. I know PAL is stating that it's uh, he's ready for war, but he, they said the same thing about John. And exactly. He stepped out of top eight. Exactly. You know, due to health. 100%. So with that in mind, it's really hard to, to know what to think of, of the statements. But in the back of my mind, I always think Dennis has passed his prime. He's proven all that he has to. And I really think he should put his health first to live a long life. And in a previous interview some months ago, he did state he wanted to start a family um, and start looking after himself. So. Yeah, cool. It doesn't make sense to me that three to six months later, Dennis has had a such a, a pivotal shift in his mind to now think, okay, I'm ready to compete against the number one in the world yeah. after three months off. It just doesn't make sense to me yet. So we'll wait for the video to come out of Armbet's TV, see what they have to say, see what Dennis has to say. But I really hope it's not a case of Igor pressuring Dennis into doing something he's not likely going to do or shouldn't do. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So, yeah. Um, all righty. I want to talk about the GOAT now. Who's that? John Bezekma. I thought you can say Ryan Bong. <laughs> 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 of course. <laughs> yep. Oh, fuck. That was good. I'll pay that. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Recently, semi-recently, we have seen John return to arm wrestling, took on Chance Shaw. He came out on top. Prove to the world once again, he's a force to be reckoned with. There's a reason why he's a go. He had to withdraw or chose to withdraw from um, top eight, top 95 eight. kilo, which I think was a good idea. And I'm sure you agree that he wasn't yeah, ready for it. He wasn't, especially the way he rocked up to the uh, the chance match. You know, he was, yep. I'm pretty sure he was blind drunk the night before. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's it's like me- mentally, like he's not even there. Yeah. With that in mind, he has chosen to take on a match with um, Kadzimirat Zolyov. Yeah, I in, wasn't... In I, January. I, I can't believe that he actually chose to do that. Yeah. That, that's a huge, huge step for him. That, that's a very big match. But, you know, if he decides to take it seriously, unlike the chance match, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's very promising. I think it's a really good match. Yeah. Now... <clears throat> John has has the winning record or streak on Zolyov. He does. So, despite being an out of you know potentially obviously a past prime John, um, based on his age and whatnot, you still have to call Zolyov the underdog because John has the winning streak. John has the winning streak, and I this was like six I, or seven years ago. I know, but. In my heart, I can never bet against John. I just can't. Oh, really? Unless he's taken on someone like LeVar, I'll almost <laughs> always bet on John. <laughs> Fair enough. So if he takes this seriously, jumps on a certain diet, <laughs> I, 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 think, I think it could really make way. One of here. those injectable diets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the all you can inject buffet diet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. So... 
Look, in saying this, Zoliov recently beat Todd Hutchins, who's arguably, convincingly, who's arguably in much better shape than John. Yeah. There might be a big tide shift here that John is just out of his league now based on age, based on current forms. This is a really hard match to call. Uh, A motivated John, I still think, could win. And I would still, by principle, back John to win. Okay. But in saying that, Zolyov is looking really good and in, in great form to win. Um, so, yeah. Zol- <sighs> Look, Zolyov is, is probably the next best thing in terms of, like, having the greatest of all time status. Okay? He's been a champion for fucking basically all his life. Right? Yep. From juniors all the way till now in, across every weight category. Or almost every weight category. He's taken down huge names. Mm-hmm. They I mean, called him the killer of monsters. Yeah. Was, that was the yeah. nickname coined uh, to him. And, you know, he has pins on Alexei Simarenko, Andre yeah. Pushka. <laughs> at, at, at a lower body weight than he is right now. How, how, many, okay. how many lightweights can say that? Yeah. Not many. So I'm really excited regardless. Yeah. I really think it's going to be a good match. That's if John really takes it seriously. I, I don't think he would take the match if he wasn't going to take it seriously. Okay. I think he, I think based on, yeah, I think he's smart enough to know if I'm choosing to take on Zolyov, I'm not going to half ass it. I'm, I'm yeah. going to go balls to the wall. So in saying that, I really think we're in for a, a big match that could go either way. That's right. It could go either way. I think we'll know better. I think we'll assume the match better once John versus Paul Lynn. Mm. Mm-hmm. For sure. So we'll see how he if he beats him, if he doesn't, or how he beats him. Yep. We'll well, know. still quite a few months away. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of uh, news and news items posted leading up to that. And I think we'll be able to see, hopefully, where John and where Zoliov are at leading into that match, but they could do a Devon and stay very quiet and discreet with their training methods. And we might see something ridiculous. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> speaking of staying secret, I have never seen Zoliov um, explain his training regime or show exercises or anything like that. I think it's very kept under guard uh, as long as he's been doing it, you know? I, there's definitely a lot of training footage of him out there, but like you said, there's not really, from an educational point of view, much out there of his training regimes. Yeah. If there is, let us know someone in the comments. Yeah, please link, link us. Link us, send us, we'd love to see it. Uh, there may be some retro videos out there that we're missing, but especially in recent history, I, I, I can't and haven't seen anything. So yeah. I'd love to know if he's done seminars, he perhaps has. Does he do training programs for anyone? Uh, that, look, we don't know. In his close circle, there might there might be some something we're missing. Yeah. Uh, look, John um, has come to Australia in the past 20, uh, 2013, 2013 or twenty fourteen. I don't know. Twenty thirteen. You're probably right. I, I think it was twenty thirteen. Twenty fourteen was the year that I started, and okay. I believe Devon was there that year. Yeah. Okay. All right. There you go. So, John, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been much of a seminar. You just said just train on the table. <laughs> yeah. Well, the AAF actually documented it, I believe. Oh, they did. Yeah, I just don't know where it is. They definitely documented all of Devon's seminars. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's like twenty-three parts. But there might be there, there may be some some videos from the seminar in the in the archives <laughs> in the oh. archives. So, all right. Yeah, I'll be having a geese. See I'll see if I can look that up, find, do some digging. Uh, but yeah, 